there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to another episode of The Cider Drinker. And today, I have got another shop-bought cider for you guys, uh, because a little while ago, I did um, Purity Brewing and uh, Western's collaboration, their pure hopped cider, which I really, really enjoyed. Um, this was uh, at my local Tesco's, and it was a nay three for five pound offer. And the one that I'm doing today is also on that offer, although when you see the bottle, you probably won't have guessed that from looking at it. Today, I am going to be reviewing Angioletti Italian Craft Cider, which comes in a little dinky little bottles like this. So there you go, Angioletti, um, Ve Vero Sigio Italiano Secco. Um, Italian Craft Cider, it comes in at 5% ABV, and yeah, it looks more like a, uh, a Prosecco bottle or something, doesn't it? It uh, really doesn't look like a cider at all, and as far as, I'm, as far as I know, I think this is my first ever Italian cider that I'll be reviewing on the show. Um, you don't get much information on the back of the bottle here, it just says Angioletti Secco Sparkling Italian Craft Cider is made from 100% Italian apple juice, no concentrate. That's always uh, good to hear. It just says it contains uh, sulfites and uh, well, obviously um, comes in 330 more bottles here. I don't know if it comes in bigger varieties, but if I find out, I'll put it down in the description below. Um, so it's produced and bottled by Pro... Uh, my Italian is not good, by the way. I can't really speak Italian, but produced and bottled by Prodotto e Imbottigliato da... And then it's got this massive address on here. And then it's distributed by Angioletti UK. So is this a proper Italian cider, or is it just uh, a UK company that have taken uh, an Italian cider recipe and called it their own? We shall see. But, I mean, it's going for the the whole shebang here. It's going for uh, you know the covered up uh, the covered up foil thing here. It's going for the cage. It's going for the cork. I mean, as you, as you can see there, it's going you know the whole hog with its um, presentation. That's for sure. So I'm going to treat it like I do every corked cider, because sometimes the pressure is a bit too much. you still got to be a bit careful getting the cage off, because, you know, the cork can just suddenly pop, which it has, no, sorry, my uh, lighting is uh, going a bit dodge at the moment. Man, I'm getting a bit, there we go, so that's off. Because um, I was in a bar one time, and um, I wanted a corked beer, and she hadn't even touched the cork and it just flew straight off. So you always got to take corks with a little bit of, uh, you know, a little pinch of salt. You know, treat them like, uh, treat them like your lover. And if you don't have a lover, then treat them like, you know, you're just about to have a really, really good cider. So there we go. Get this cork off if I can on camera. I think it's going to be a bit of a tight one. Oh no, here we go. Here we go, it's going. I don't think it's going to be a bit of a big pop, but... I tell a lie. It was. There we go. Right. Well, clear the smoke out a little bit and let's just see what uh, what lies in this bottle of Angioletti cider. It even smells like a uh, like a Prosecco or a fine champagne. Extremely um. Wow. So it's almost uh, almost vinegary in its smells. Very tart. Sharp. Quite a bitter nose. Hmm. Smells uh, very different. Um, and I'm going to be pouring it in my uh, Bebel with Care Alphavine glass here because I haven't uh, featured the guys on this show recently. But uh, just to let you guys know that, uh, you know, I'm still showing my, my support for you guys because, you know, another fantastic company. If you've not uh, tried them out, Bebel with Care from, uh, from Germany. Definitely try them out. I've done uh, all their products on this show. So, yeah, definitely check them out. Right, let's get this poured out. I have a feeling this is going to be very much like um, the cider that I've got at the top there, which I cannot remember the name of because it's uh, Swedish, but it was like one of the best ciders I've ever tried. Their I think it was Vandu, um, Vandu Bremeries or so something like that, but it was really, really nice. Anyway, let's go for the colour test and uh, yeah, quite hefty carbonation as you can see. Looks like um, a Prosecco or a fine champagne in the glass. Very light. Um, like golden straw colour there. Yeah, if, if I'd have served this to you guys at uh, a dinner party, you'd have thought I'd have just given you um, a small bottle of Prosecco, but any more smells? Ah, it's just a very... It's, it smells like champagne yeast have been used in um, the production of this. Very... 
it, it, it's um, gone less vinegary and it's more like floral, very light, fresh smells. <sighs> smells really, really nice. Really lovely um, crisp apple notes as well. It smells delicious. I'm just hoping that it um, also tastes delicious as well. But uh, we're going to find out now. Cheers, guys. Here's to Angio Letti Italian Cider. Well, you can buy this from Tesco. So, cheers, Tesco's. Hmm. Okay, let's get a second opinion. Hmm. Hmm. That's an interesting one. Uh, it, it's... It kind of tastes a little bit like a Prosecco as well. Um, but I think the, uh... There's far too much carbonation in this straight away. I mean, uh, look, that, that, that is not going anywhere. You can hear it. And um, unfortunately, the carbonation is kind of uh, detracting from most of the flavours, which I do find. I mean, I'm not a big fan of Prosecco because you just put it in your mouth and it's just all like froth and fizz and not really much taste. And this is uh, kind of the problem with this um, cider here. It's got a very, um, again, like with the smells, it's got a very light floral taste. It's uh, quite full-bodied. I'm struggling to find, like, differentiate whether this has um, had added sugars or not, uh, because it does have quite a thick taste to it, but I'm not sure if it's, like, syrupy or not, but... Mm. If you can uh, hear some noise in the background, that's um, our new cat. Well, it's not a new cat, uh, but we've adopted it from my uh, girlfriend's parents, and now it uh, lives with us, so if you hear any uh, background noise, you know... Uh, what what that is. Anyway, yeah, back to the cider. Um, yeah, I don't know what to make of this one. It feels as though it should be a really good cider, but it, it, it's kind of holding itself back. It's not really letting its um, tastes come through, because what tastes there are are really, really nice, but I feel that the carbonation is just attracting far too much from the tastes to, um, like, really appreciate them. Excuse me. <clears throat> Pardon me. To be expected with all that carbonation, isn't it? So, uh, well, I'm going to go and get a final taste before the final verdict and I'll uh, tell you what I think. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bizarre one, this one. Because I can't fault the taste, so the taste is really nice. It's, uh, yeah. Floral, light, really like lovely fresh apple um, tastes as well. Kind of yeasty, as I said, like it kind of like smells and tastes like there's a champagne yeast being um, like been involved in the process of this. But unfortunately, the carbonation is just uh, it's just far too intense, and it just I, f I, f I find when it when the cider is far too carbonated, it just kind of does detract from all the uh, the the nice flavors that there might be there. Um, so. As obviously it's been a, you know, it's a cork cider and everything, it's like to be expected, but I kind of wish that it had, um, you know, it wasn't caught and it was just like in a normal, a normal bottle, like a normal top bottle, because then there might not be as much carbonation, you might be able to get the flavours a bit more. Having said that though, I mean, it's still quite a nice, quite a nice cider, I wouldn't say it's like the best cider I've ever tried, but I mean for a short bought cider at £1.79 and on a 3 for £5 deal, this is definitely head and shoulders above all the uh, normal mainstream crap that you can uh, buy off the supermarket shelves. Um, with that said though, I'm, I'm going to go and give Angioletti Italian Craft Cider a 6 out of 10. I would still suggest you uh, go out and give this a go, because as I said, for £1.79, even if you don't like it, um, you haven't really broken the bank too much. Uh, but if the guys can sort out the, um, the massive carbonation issue, then I feel that this might get bumped up to maybe a 7 or even an 8. So, um, as I said, you know, the tastes are really, really nice. Just a couple of issues are, are keeping it from like being a real, like, top quality cider. And with that said, that is another episode of The Cider Drink for you guys. I hope you liked it, and as usual, I will be back with another delicious and tasty cider soon. Till then, I'm going to pour out some more of this, uh, 
Italian craft cider, bought from Tesco's, possibly all the way from Italy, but I don't really know that for a fact, and I'm going to enjoy the rest of it. Take care, guys. Until next time.